So far, we've initialized the pipeline in Metal and scheduled a draw call. To start rendering 3D content, we first need a 3D model with some vertices. 3D models are made up of triangles like this one. Each triangle has three vertices, three edges, and one face. The GPU is optimized for triangles because a triangle is the polygon with the fewest number of points that can be drawn in two dimensions. In other words, all its points are in the same plane and a triangle is always flat. In the next video, we'll render some points and a triangle in 3D space. Each vertex of the triangle will have an X, Y, Z coordinate. The X axis is horizontal, the Y axis is vertical, and the Z axis points into the screen. Notice that this is a half cube. The X and Y values go from minus one to one, but the Z axis goes from zero to one. This coordinate set is called normalized device coordinates, or NDC. In the demo, we'll position the triangle at the front of the space with Z being zero. Later on, we'll be working with this 3D model. On the left is the quad mesh that you'll see in Blender. A quad has four vertices. When we read the model file into our app, all the quads will be divided into two and the mesh triangulated into the model you see on the right. Let's follow one of these triangles down the graphics pipeline. Before drawing, we set up a buffer with all the vertex positions and send it to the GPU. The GPU fetches this buffer. If we're drawing a triangle, then an input assembler groups the vertices into groups of three. If we draw lines, then they're in groups of two. The GPU scheduler passes these grouped vertices to the vertex processing stage. This is a programmable stage where we can position vertices using a vertex function. This function is stored on the GPU. It's written in metal shading language, which is a language based on C++. Notice the semicolon at the end of the return statement. Don't worry if that code looks confusing, we'll be going over every bit of it. On to primitive assembly. This stage assembles the groups into primitives. The primitive depends on the type you're drawing, points, lines, or triangles. Some vertices may be clipped now if they don't fit inside the screen coordinates. The remaining primitives are then passed along to the rasterizer. The rasterizer converts visible parts of the primitive to fragments. Each fragment contributes to one pixel on the screen. If you've enabled depth testing, then the rasterizer tests whether this fragment is in front of all the fragments from other primitives. If it isn't, then the rasterizer discards the fragment. Only those fragments that are visible on screen proceed down the pipeline to fragment processing. The rasterizer sends fragments down the pipeline, and all we have to do now is give each fragment its final color. This is another programmable stage. The fragment function returns this blue color as a float four in RGBA. That's red, green, blue alpha format. This is a very simple fragment function, but it's here so that we can calculate 3D lighting. If a fragment is facing towards a light, then we should return a lighter color than a fragment facing away from a light. All these fragments are written to a special memory location called the frame buffer. The frame buffer is what's finally presented to the screen. In the next video, we'll look at how we write the programmable stages of the pipeline, the vertex and fragment functions.